Hello and welcome to Swashbuckling with Code. I'm Jimmy Cleveland and today I want to take you on a little tour of the GitHub CLI. In particular, I'm going to show you some practical commands that I've been using more and more to speed up my workflow. Many of you might not even know that there is a CLI tool for GitHub that you can use in your terminal, but many of you probably do know about it and you just haven't really dug into it or just didn't seem super practical to you or use it for a command here and there if you're anything like me. But recently I tasked myself with trying to dig into it a little bit more and incorporate it in my workflow. And I have to say that there's a few commands that I have a hard time living without now. So let's just jump into it, shall we? To get started with GitHub CLI, you're going to head over to cli.github.com. I'll put a link into the description and I'm not going to go through the setup for that. That's not what this video is for, but you can see they have a couple of commands that you can use to install it. Just know that you are going to probably want to set up an auth token with SSH and go through that whole process of logging in, but it's pretty simple. The CLI docs themselves are pretty hit or miss, honestly. They do have all the commands listed off on the side, but there's not a great search, and sometimes some commands you would think are in one section or another, you have to click around a lot to figure them out, and sometimes the output doesn't really show you what you can really do with the command, which I think is what's really missing. Some of them are great, um, like I think the PR list one shows the output itself, which I really like, just to kind of quickly see, oh, okay, when I input these commands, this is generally how they're used, and uh, what I'm going to get back. But that's why I made this video. I'm going to show you some practical commands. And then if you get interested in uh, the GitHub CLI, you can dig into the, the manual itself and see if there's any commands that interest you. Now I'm going to kick this off with one of my favorite commands that I think really showcases the power of the GitHub CLI and how much it can improve your workflow. And that is the gh repo create command. Now I'm using a snippet here in this clip to showcase the power of it and how fast, but just with a few keystrokes, I can create a repo and I can set it to private and I could push it up uh, immediately without having to do the clunky interface that you normally do where you go into the browser and you have to create a new repo and then you copy the lines that you need to do for um, you know, a project that you've already started and been working on, but you're just like, okay, now it's a pretty good point to push this up. Super fast, super useful. Uh, this is one of the main commands that I like to use all the time. Now you can use the gh repo list command. Uh, I only use this just to see that my repo has been created, so I don't have to go to the browser. Um, and I'll see that GitHub CLI demo at the top there. And if I don't really know what command to use, you can use help on any subsection or any argument um, of the GH CLI. So in this case, I'm kind of looking and I see, oh, well, there's an edit command. Well, what does that do? Well, this is actually pretty cool because if I made a repo and let's say it's private and I wanted to switch it to public, I can just go GH repo edit and I can go down to the visibility and then I can just select public and it's done. That one's actually quite a few steps to do in the web UI. Now I told you I was going to show you how I created that snippet and I'm personally using Raycast on the Mac and you can see here I've got a little snippet that's just GHRC shortcut and what's cool about it is I have it move my cursor back to where it's supposed to put the name of the repo automatically when I type it in. You of course can use any shortcut tool you like but in combination with snippets this is a really powerful tool. Another common workflow for me that I use the GitHub CLI for is when I want to make a new branch and push up for a PR really quickly. So in this instance, like I'm creating a new commit real quick, I've just added a new feature or whatever, and I want to make a PR really fast. I can simply type ghpr create, and it'll ask me if I want to push up my branch if I haven't already. It then walks you through a little wizard each time, which is actually pretty useful because if you want to change the title or let's say that you want to create the PR as a draft, these are really useful little quick features you can do. You can also open it in the browser real quick if you just rather do it there. Just like that, you've got a PR created automatically. You can use the ghpr view command to look at the PR and see if any checks are running or just any information about the PR in general. I'll show you checks in a moment. But what's really cool then is you can use the ghpr edit to go back and edit your command. So you don't have to go into the browser to do that either. In this case, I'm using it to add some reviewers to a PR that I've already created. And you'll see now when I use the ghpr view command, uh, it shows those reviewers as part of the information for that pull request. Another handy pull request command is ghpr list. And this lists out all of the pull requests for your project, which is super handy. There's also an alias ghpr ls for it. And once you've listed all those out, they all have the numbers. So you can use ghpr view and then pass it a number to look at any pull request, not just the one that's the branch that you're on. Now this next one is one of my favorites because it merges a bunch of really common commands into one, and that's ghpr merge. And so what this will do is ask you uh, how you want to merge 
the current branch that you're on and it will default into the, the main branch that you're using. It will then prompt you if you want to delete the branch both locally and on GitHub, which keeps your repository nice and clean. And then it merges it in, it checks out the main branch for you, and then it also pulls down the main branch with the updates. So this is a common operation that I just always want to do is, you know, usually I go into the browser and I merge it. And then in my terminal, I go and I check out main and I pull down and it just does all these things in one nice little command. And that's why it's one of my favorites. You can also use the PR merge command on branches that you don't have checked out. So if you do ghpr list or ls, you can list out all of the PRs and then you can just pick the number. So ghpr merge the number and you can merge a different one if you like to. Now what's cool about this is it's not going to let you merge uh, if there's conflicts or if the checks aren't completed or anything like that. So you don't have to worry about that problem. So let's say that um, I went to merge this PR and it wouldn't let me. And unfortunately it doesn't give you that many details if you don't check it out. So I'll ghpr check out the number, which is another handy little one. And then from there what I can do is I can run merge again on the branch that I'm on and it'll give me a little more information on what's wrong with it. It might be checks or it might have a conflict. And it, in this case, it gives me actual command that I can use to run to pull down it locally and resolve those conflicts. So here I'm just demoing a common workflow for me that the GitHub CLI has sped up significantly. And you can see when I try to merge this again, I haven't pushed up my changes and it gives me some additional information that the branches have diverged. So that's pretty cool. And once your conflict is resolved, you push it up, you run the lovely merge command, and it does all that automation of checking out your main branch and pulling down and all that good stuff. And just to show you that, I'm going to do a git log here. And you can see here that we have all the commits that we just recently did uh, into the main branch. Another really handy command that's similar to PR list is the PR status command. What I like about this one is it kind of gives you uh, the list of the PRs that affect you. So it will show you the current branch's PR that you're on. It will show you all PRs created by you, and it will show you any that are requesting a code review from you. I've only recently been incorporating this one in my workflow, but I have found it to be quite helpful and I'm starting to use it more and more. I don't typically just kind of run it over and over to see if there's anything waiting for me. Uh, my kind of workflow is that I have the GitHub app on my phone and when I get a notification, I can just glance at it real quick and instead of picking up my phone and looking at it at all, I just know that it's likely to be a PR and I can just tab over to the terminal, run that command real quick and see if there's anything waiting for me. The next thing I want to show with pull requests is how the CLI tool can be useful for workflows like your uh, tests, you know, Linton test or any continuous integration actions that you're running. So here I'm making a commit that's purposely going to fail our tests and creating a PR for that real quick just to fire off that continuous integration. And I just kind of showcase here that you can also add a body real quick. And you can switch the CLI to use the editor of your choice. It starts off with Nano, but you can use Vim or Emacs or whatever you like. But what happens when I submit this PR, which is still awesome and super fast, uh, if I go to list it, if I list it too fast, it's not going to actually update with the workflows because it hasn't finished starting all that up just yet. So if you wait a moment, though, you can use uh, GHPR view is the one that I normally use, and you can see that it says checks pending. You can also list out your workflows, but I haven't really found that to be super useful for me. Maybe y'all will find something cool, um, but I usually just stick to GHPR view. And where this is useful is mostly just multitasking. Like I can just fire that up and I can be like, okay, the checks are pending. Let me go and do some additional work or whatever I was doing in another tab. Um, and then I can come back and I can just check that real quick. And I'm like, oh no, all my checks are failing. And you can also see here, if we use a GHPR status, it will show our failing checks for branches that we might not even be on just any PR that we've created. So if you end up moving over to a new branch and working, that's a great command just to see like, oh shoot, my other branch that I just created, it's failing. Gosh darn it. Of course, once you fix that locally and push it up, all of your workflows will run again and you can just use the ghpr view command again. And this time you should see that all of your workflow checks are passing. And as I mentioned previously, if you try to merge something that uh, the status checks, the workflow checks are not passing, well, then it will just not allow you to. So it, of course, does obey the rules of your repo. Another really handy set of commands from the CLI for me personally are the gist commands. This just actually makes gists a lot more useful to me because I can just create them on the fly. In this case, I'm just kind of showing that uh, I can point it to a file that I just want to upload because I'm like, oh, this is a good example of how to do a thing that I'll probably forget how to do in the near future. And just with this command, you can hurry up and create a gist. You can also use ghgist list to list out all of your gists. Gist list. 
and then that allows you to run the gh gist view command with an id of the gist there might be a more handy way to do it um, but that's just usually how i do it now it will print that just out into your terminal so you can do some fun stuff from there like pipe it into some sort of syntax highlighter in this case i'm just using npx because i don't have it locally installed just to show the power of it that you can do just on the fly but what it's really handy for for me is actually sending it into a file now this is of course on nix based systems you'd have to figure out how to do it on windows but i can just uh you know since it's downloading that and printing it out into the terminal i can just send it into a file and the only problem that i have with that is that it also kind of prints the description into the file so i just have to go in and delete that description real quick another handy way to do this is the gist clone command and the one thing that i don't like about this command is that it makes you create a directory which is just kind of weird i usually don't want that i just want to put all the files in one thing but i haven't figured out how to do that yet but it's still really nice it doesn't have that previous problem of you know inputting the description into the file and if you have you know multiple files that you want to dump in just one relegated area well it works pretty well you can of course pick the flavor that you like now i'm going to round this video off with a command that is actually not that practical not one that i use very often but it shows some of the power if you're kind of an automation nut or you are putting together some programs that are using the github cli under the hood so you can use uh, the gh search repos command and you can pass it tags or names or anything like that that you want to do to search for certain types of repos now in this case i'm showing there's this uh, aws shell repo that i found at the top of the list here now that's a pretty simple command it's not that useful in general you can use uh, repo view to take a look at that repo and it will show you the readme which sometimes is really nice if you're just looking for a command real quick i could see some practical use for that but what's really cool is that you can actually take the output and turn it into JSON and you can use a comma separated list to pick the properties that you want to put in JSON. So in this case, I want to know the watchers. I want to know the created at date. I want to know the updated at date, et cetera. And maybe I'm going to do some sorting or something like that. Again, not something I'm trying to pass off as super practical that you're going to use. I just think it's pretty cool to see that there is a lot of power and probably some really neat things that you could do with this command line. That's all I've got for you today. Uh, hopefully this has interested you in taking a further look at the GitHub CLI and seeing if it's useful in your workflow. Maybe it is, maybe it's not. Go ahead and tell me in the comments if you've got any cool little tips that you like to use it for. But with that, thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.